Here's a quick question for you. Which website would you choose? This one with the beautifully designed but static web page or the same web page with these awesome interactive motion effects? Which one would you choose? If you pick the second one, I have great news for you because in this video, I'll show you how you can add these awesome motion effects to your WordPress website using Elementor Pro. And no, you don't need to be a professional designer to create these awesome motion effects. If I can do it, you can do it too. And before we get started with the video, my name is Yaz. I'm from the Brainstorm Force team, creators of the most popular WordPress theme in the world, Astra, and we create content about our latest product updates as well as tutorials for beginners and non-coders. So if you want to improve your WordPress skills, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on your notifications. And just one more thing before we get started with the tutorial, I'll give you a quick preview of all the effects we'll be using in this video. As you can see here, this is my demo website. And as I scroll down, you can see that that pizza here rotates as I scroll up or down. And it's really cool and it just makes it a little bit more interesting on the web page. And if I go down, we also have the delivery guy getting closer and closer to delivering his pizza from left to right as we scroll back. But now as I go down here, we've also got another effect here. And can you notice that over here? If I move my mouse, the plates are kind of moving with it. And again, it's another interactive feature that can help improve the engagement with the users on your website. And if I scroll down even more, you can see that the prices start appearing. And this is a transparency effect. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do all these effects step by step. Let's go. And if you're wondering if you need to have motion effects for your website to be successful, the answer is no, you don't. But these effects can be a fun and effective way to make your website more interactive and engaging for your users. The first question I have for you is, do you already have a website you can work with? If you do, then great. If not, let's quickly set one up for this tutorial. All right, here I am in my WordPress dashboard and the only thing I've got installed is Elementor Pro, which is what we need to create these awesome motion graphics with. So the theme we're gonna be using for this tutorial is gonna be the Astra theme. And then you can install the starter templates plugin, which lets us install beautiful and professionally designed, fully functional websites in just a few clicks. And once you install starter templates, you'll get access to all these amazing pre-built, fully functional templates that you can use for your website. But you can see on the top right corner of this template that this is a premium template. But don't worry, we have tons of different free templates you can use as well. Anyways, once you've chosen the template you like, you can choose to upload a logo, choose a color scheme, and boom. Now you've got yourself a fully functioning website in just a few minutes, if anything. And what you might notice here, if I scroll down, you can see that none of the motion effects are actually active right now. And that's because this is the default version of this template. And what we're gonna be doing next is going to Elementor and begin adding these motion effects onto our web page. We're gonna go up here and press Edit with Elementor. And again, to use motion effects, you need Elementor Pro. And there we go, Elementor's loaded up for us. And what we're gonna do down here is we're gonna go onto this pizza we see here, or if you have any other elements or content on your page, you can use that as well to follow along. So I'm gonna click on here. And as you can see on the left-hand menu, we can see the pizza image right there. We're gonna go into advanced at the top. And then down here, you should see motion effects. Click on that. And we have a bunch of different effects we can actually apply to this. And initially, I'm just gonna demo using this pizza image, just to give you an idea of what we can do with motion effects. Start off, we have scrolling effects. So if I toggle that on, you can see we have vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, transparency, blur, rotate, scale, a whole lot of different ones. So, so if I click on this pencil icon here, it activates the effect for us. So right here, we've got a bit of a menu as well for that particular effect. So if I scroll now, you can see that it actually moves up and down. This is the vertical scroll effect. So if I increase the speed as well, we try that, it's a little bit faster. And we can, what we can do is also we can change the viewport. So if I'm at the top, we can change its starting position by scrolling it to the right. And we can also change the finishing position by scrolling it to the left from this end as well. And that's kind of how you adjust it. It's basically finding an effect you like and adjusting it till it looks good on your screen. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the effects now so we can reset it by clicking on this reset button here, back to default. And that gets rid of that vertical scroll that we had. Next, let's check out the horizontal scroll. So you can imagine how that might work, just like the vertical scroll, but instead it goes sideways, just like that. You can actually change the direction of the scroll as well by clicking here. You can change it the other way, the opposite way. And that looks pretty good as well. And we're gonna reset that once again, and I'm gonna show you the transparency effect. So this one's kind of like a magic trick because it makes our pizza disappear, but I could do that without magic as well, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And as you can see, when we scroll down, the pizza appears and disappears. 
And that's a transparency effect. And we can also adjust that, just the level of transparency if we want to. If it's a fade in, fade out, fade out and in, fade in and out. So we can test those out as well. So if I change this up here. So what this means is that initially it's faded in. But if we scroll down, it's going to fade out. And then it's going to fade back in as we go further along. So that's how this effect works. The transparency effect is pretty cool. I'm going to reset that once again. And next we're going to check out the blur one. It's kind of like the same as the transparency effect, but it's going to blur in and out as we go down the page. You can see there, it's not quite focused, so maybe we can reduce this right there so it looks a little bit good. And that looks a little bit better now, so it's currently it's out of focus, it's blurred. And now when we scroll down, it's back in focus right here. So that's kind of how this effect works. We're going to reset that once again. And next is the rotating effect, and that's what we had in the intro of this video. So if I click on that here, you can see that as we scroll, it begins spinning. And that looks really good in my opinion. It's pretty cool. And you can change the direction of the scroll as well from left to right. So if we change that now, it's going the opposite way. We can change the speed as well. Let's max it out. <laughs> and that's really fast. It looks like a wheel. That's pretty cool. Um, and then again, changing the viewport where you'd like it to start and end. So currently it's stopped right there. But we want it to have a nice smooth scroll, so we're going to leave it at maximum values there. All right, we're going to reset that once again and go down into scale. And as you can probably guess, as you scroll down, it's going to get bigger and smaller as it can go further. And honestly, I think I want my pizza as large as possible. So is there a way to keep it large permanently? Maybe <laughs> something like that. I don't know. But as you can see, as we scroll down, it's going to get larger or smaller, depending on which direction we scroll. So that's really cool. And we can have scale up or scale down and again, scale down, then up something like that. So it's going to start large right there as we scroll down, it's gotten smaller and then it's going to get large once again, right there. So that's how the scale effect works. I'm going to reset that. And you can see here, apply effect on desktop, tablet, mobile as well. So you can uncheck any of that right here by pressing the X. So we're going to leave all of those on for now. So you can also choose whether you want the effects relative to your viewport or your entire page. By default, it seems that the effect is relative to the viewport because as we scroll down based on our viewport position, the effects are beginning to apply. Awesome. So those are all our scrolling effects. So I'm going to toggle that off right now and I'm going to show you the mouse effects. So if I toggle the mouse effects on, we've got the mouse track and 3D tilt. So basically how the mouse track works is the object tracks our mouse. So based on our mouse position, it's going to move around. Just remember that mouse tracking effect won't work on your mobile because you're not using a mouse, right? So it looks like this at the moment. And that's quite cool because it's a little bit more interactive because you can kind of play around and make objects on your screen move. So we can also increase the speed. <laughs> it's a little bit more energetic right there. It's a bit too much. And we're going to also change the direction so we can change it to direct. So it kind of follows our mouse rather than going the opposite way. Before with the opposite setting, so it's kind of like inverted. So if we move our mouse away, it moves away. If we move our mouse close, it moves close. But with direct, it actually kind of follows the movement a little bit. And that's how the mouse tracking effects work. I'm going to reset that as well. And next, we're going to check out the 3D tilt. So I'm going to click on the pencil button once again to activate the effect. And you can see here, and that's a really cool effect actually. And it works really well with the pizza because it's a disc kind of shape. As we move our mouse, it kind of tilts and rotates around a little bit. And it has a nice 3D effect to it. So it lives up to the name as well. And that looks really cool. I think it works really good with the pizza again. <laughs> and we can change it once again to direct, which it follows our movement right here, or opposite. And I think the direct setting works a little bit better with this effect, in my opinion, because it's kind of following and rotating to the direction of our mouse. And again, you can also adjust the speed if you want to. And that's all our mouse effects. Next, let's take a look at sticky effects. So if I drop this down, we have top or bottom. And to explain how the sticky effect works, it's probably better to show you. So I'm going to drop this down right here and I'm going to choose top first. So if I scroll this down, you can see that the pizza is now sticking to the top of the screen as we scroll down. So it's kind of following us all throughout the web page. And that's what the sticky effect is. The same way we can also have something stick to the bottom of the screen. But right now at the top of the page, the pizza is still visible. So that might not work, but let's give it a try. So it does move a little bit to show you how that effect works. But how it works is clear to see with the top setting because as we scroll down, it's sticking to the top of the page. And that's a really cool feature to have. 
You can probably come up with really cool ways to use it as well, like having buttons or other objects on your web page. Scroll and stick to the top or bottom of your screen as the visitors scroll down to the page. And you also have the option to offset the object with the number of pixels. So if I move that up, you can see that we're offsetting the pizza a little bit lower than its default position. So we can choose exactly where it sits. And over here, we can also enable stay in column, which means that the pizza won't move past its column. So if I enable that right here and scroll down, it will scroll down with us, but as soon as it reaches the end of its column, it's gonna stay there. So it just adds a little bit of limitation to it if we want to. I'm gonna to untoggle that and I'm also gonna turn off the mouse effects. And I'm also gonna turn off the sticky settings as well. Awesome, and lastly, we have entrance animations. And if I drop that down, we have a whole range of different animations you can add to any object on your web page. So for example, let's actually try this jello one you see here, and <laughs> that's really cool. So that's how the pizza is actually gonna appear on the page. Let's try a few more. There's a swing, that's a pretty cool one. <laughs> Light speed in, so the pizza is being kind of delivered onto the center of our page. Roll in. That's actually not bad for a pizza as well. All these round effects, if, because the pizza is round, all these effects are actually working really well with this. So basically you have all these effects you can choose from. You can click through and find the exact one that matches the kind of effect you're looking to bring for the objects on your web page. <laughs> That's really cool. And once you've chosen the effect you want, you can also change the animation duration. You can leave it slow, fast, or normal. And That's a bit aggressive. Let's go back to the jello one and try that. <laughs> That's really wobbly. That's really cool. And you can also add an animation delay if you'd like to. I've just disabled that effect as well. Now that we know how these effects work, let's begin applying it to different areas of our website. So for this pizza up here, I think the effect we're gonna apply is that scrolling effect with the rotation. So we're gonna go up here and press this to toggle the scrolling effects. And we're gonna enable the rotational effect here. See, that one here. And currently the speed is a little bit too high, so maybe I'm gonna lower it to, to maybe three or something. And that might still be a little bit high for some of you guys. It looks a little bit too fast. But I think it's fine for this demonstration. It looks pretty cool. And we're also gonna add an effect to this title here. So I'm gonna click on it over here and edit. And once again, go back into advanced over here and motion effects. And for this one, I wanna add a scrolling effect as well. So if we go here, for this, I want to add a blur effect. So what I want it to do is when I scroll down, I want it to start blurring a little bit. So if I click here, it's currently doing the opposite, as you can see here. So it's currently blurred right at the top. And as we scroll down, it's coming into focus. We want it to change and do the opposite. So we're going to change it to fade out. But it's currently still blurred, so we're going to have to adjust this here. About there. A little bit more maybe. So right now it's in focus, and as we go down, it's blurring. So that's exactly what I wanted. So as we scroll down, maybe we can also keep it in focus for a little bit longer. Yeah, just like that. So right at the top, it's in focus, and as we scroll down, it's getting blurrier and blurrier. And I think that looks pretty cool. It just adds kind of like a frosty kind of effect to that title there. So that works pretty well. Next, we're gonna go down here. We're gonna leave these as they are, but, but this is where I added that delivery guy on the scooter, if you remember from the intro. So we can do that right now. So what I did was I actually deleted these elements here. So if I click on them here, delete, 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 and delete. Then I can drag this image widget onto this column here. And what we can do is choose our image, and I've already uploaded the scooter driver over here. And if you want to upload any images, you can. You can just go here and upload anything you want. And remember to use an image without a background for the best results. So I've got this one right here. I'm going to insert media right now. And there's a scooter driver right here. And he looks pretty cool. He looks pretty happy to be delivering our pizza. And again, we're going to go into advanced right here. Motion effects. And we're going to click on scrolling effect. And for this one, we're going to use a horizontal scroll so that he moves left to right. So if I enable that right now, you can see that we got him moving, he's got gas. So that looks really cool, but we want him going the opposite direction. So as we scroll down, we want him moving further away to the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. So let's change the direction here. We're gonna go to the right. And that looks awesome. And currently it's at the maximum points for the viewport, but that's fine, it still looks quite good. 
but we can also change the speed if we want to as well. So if you want to make him go really fast, we can do that as well. You can see here, he's really keen to go deliver your pizza for you. We're just going to make that maybe half of that speed, and we're going to leave it at 5 right here. I think that looks quite cool. And of course, these outlines won't be there on our web page itself. And just a tip as well, if you already have a scrolling effect on an element like this, and if you choose to add a mouse effect like this, sure, it looks quite cool right here because he's moving around. But if you add both of these effects and you scroll on the actual page, it might look a little bit less smooth and a little bit jagged, right? Like that, it looks a little bit glitchy. So I recommend you either have one or the other. So you can have a scrolling effect or a mouse effect. I wouldn't recommend that you have both applied to the same object. All right, now that brings us on to the next area here, and we've got three different plates here, and they already have a hover animation applied to them. You can see that when we hover over them, they have a little animation and they bounce up a little bit. And for these, I really want to add that 3D tilt effect we saw earlier. So to do that, we're going to go here, click on the image to bring up the settings. We're going to go into advanced, motion graphics once again, and go into mouse effects. And down here, we're going to enable 3D tilt. You can see right there, it's moving around, following our mouse a little bit. And I think the 3D tilt works really nice with food or plates of food or even round shapes in general. It looks quite cool. All right, I'm happy with that. We're going to do the same thing and apply it to this image as well. We're going to click on it here, go into advanced, motion effects, and enable the 3D tilt. There we go. And the last one here, the dessert. I'm doing the same thing motion effects, mouse effects and 3D tilt. And there we go, we've got our moving plates right here, and they're kind of doing a little dance for us, following the mouse around, <laughs> and that looks quite good. And again, I think the round shapes work really well with this effect. That looks really cool. All right, let's keep moving down further. And here we are in the best deal section. So here, what we can do is try and add something to reveal the price as we scroll down and discover this area of the page. So to do that, we can go here and click on this price here. Click here and go into advanced right here, motion effects. And that one's gonna be the transparency effect. So remember, it's in the scrolling effects. Transparency right here. So I'm gonna enable that. You can see, as we scroll down, it reveals itself right here. But at the moment, you can see that even when this area is directly in the middle of the screen, it's still a little bit translucent. So we're gonna adjust that a little bit and bring it across here. So it's completely gone right now at the top, and as we scroll up and align it with the middle of our page, we can see it fully there. And that's exactly what I want. And while we've got this area centered on our screen, let's go ahead and do that for all these other prices as well. So I'm gonna click on the same one here, edit, go into the advanced tab, motion effects, and go into scrolling effects. Click on transparency, and we're gonna adjust the same thing until it looks good on our screen. That looks good to me. We kind of want it to align with the same transparency as this one here. So let's move ahead the bottom marker here. Something like that. As you can see, the timing between them is a little bit offset. And that's just to do with their positioning on the page. And lastly, we're going to do that for the $16 one here as well. So go into settings. Hit an advanced tab right here. Once again, motion effects. Go up into scrolling effects and press transparency and enable it. We're going to adjust the top threshold here. Move it till it's completely visible. And we're going to adjust the bottom one as well. And that looks really cool in my opinion. A little bit of magic once again. As we scroll down, we have our deals right here and the prices reveal themselves as we stumble onto it. And that's really awesome. And as you can see, we've set up our complete page with a bunch of different motion effects. So we've got the title right here with its blurring effect as we scroll down, our rotating pizza as we scroll down, and our delivery driver getting to his destination as fast as he can. We've got our plates right here moving around with our mouse. And we've got our prices right here revealing themselves as we scroll down as well. So these are just some of the examples of what you can do with these motion effects. And for some of you viewers, this might be a little bit too much in terms of the motion effects on the page, but of course you can dial this down and be a little bit more subtle with the effects, use less effects, and do exactly what you like with your page. If you have any questions or got stuck with any part of the tutorial, please leave a comment down below and let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can.
And that's it for this tutorial. If you got value from the video, make sure you leave a like down below, subscribe to our channel by clicking over here, and don't forget to turn on notifications. And if you want to watch even more WordPress tutorials, click on this playlist over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.